For generations, disabled children in northern Ghana have been murdered because they're believed to be possessed with evil spirits. Advocacy and education have lessened but not stopped this practice. <laughs> Now Ghana's leading investigative reporter wants to catch the killers in the act. For centuries, some West African communities have branded children born deformed or with disabilities as evil spirits. They are seen as a drain on limited resources, and so medicine men are often asked to perform rituals and prepare poisonous concoctions to kill them. Thousands of defenseless children have been murdered in this way. My name is Anas Arimiawa Nas. I'm an investigative reporter. Because of the work I do, I never show my face. I've come to northern Ghana to investigate this spirit child phenomenon. Food is scarce here. Even children must work for the family to eat. Now the long dry season has come. Whole families are moving to the big city looking for work or to sell their animals. Living on the edge of survival, the birth of a disabled child is greatly feared. It's seen as a terrible burden on the family, an extra mouth to feed. The child won't be able to help in the field, and neither will its mother, who will have to devote precious time to its care. Out of this fear, an ancient tradition has grown. The belief that such a child is a spirit child, an evil presence that must be destroyed before it threatens the survival of the family. It doesn't even need to be disabled. Any child in a family where things are going wrong can be branded as evil. And when this happens, elders in the community known as concoction men are called in to poison the child. Through a a I <laughs> I'm heading for a place known locally as the Evil Forest because the bodies of spirit children have been buried here for centuries. These stones here are the only indication to show that evil children were buried here. The concoction men hide the bodies under the stones to prevent animals from digging them up. This forest remains green and still standing because the local people are afraid. They are scared that the evil forest would eat them up. Local NGOs have often used dialogue to talk to community members to stop this practice. Advocacy has been successful to some extent but has not been able to eradicate this from the community. We are in a modern democratic Ghana now. Law enforcement must take over to stamp out this once and for all. But we can't find any record of anyone ever being arrested for what can only be described as a dreadful crime. I've come to police headquarters in Bolgatanga to meet the regional commander and find out why. It is a very difficult thing to do. It is a very difficult thing to do, even if you get the information. One, you should know where it is happening, who are behind, and uh, who are in carnivals, so that you can mount a sting operation and then get them. And uh, it's unfortunate that we have no idea at all why this is happening. 
who are behind all this and why all this while they have not been arrested. As I explained, it is being done on the quiet and you will never know. If the police can't find the evidence, maybe I can. My plan is to find some concoction men to invent a so-called problem child and see if they will diagnose it as an evil spirit. Then I aim to catch them in the act of trying to poison it. A colleague has agreed to let us use Kofi, his 18-month-old son, to play the part of my spirit child when the concoction men come to do the deed. But obviously, I can't risk his life, so at the last moment, Kofi will be switched with the contents of this suitcase. A similar-looking dummy of a child made from silicone by a movie props company in London. Exactly as I was looking for. My first step is to integrate into the community. I am moving to Sirugu, the historical heartland of the spirit child phenomena, where I have rented this property. With separate buildings and two entrances, it's perfect for my plan. In three weeks of investigation, I've already met 14 individuals spread over an area the size of Lebanon from northern Ghana to neighboring Burkina Faso, who admitted they'd killed spirit children before. Ten of these said they were willing to poison my child. Now it's time to do a deal with one of them, a broker who acts as a go-between. I've told him that since my son was born, nothing has gone right for me. I've lost money and my cars have broken down. Now we are meeting to make the final arrangements. <laughs> Mm. Okay. 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 This is the soothsayer shrine. The broker and the spiritualist each hold one end of a wooden staff and interpret its movement as answers from the oracle they are consulting. <laughs> Next, the broker asks specific questions of the oracle, offering two possible answers. If the staff taps the stone to his left, the first answer is correct. If it taps the stone to his right, then the second answer is correct. Finally, he makes statements. Now, a tap on the stones in front of him signals confirmation from the oracle. Now we have the oracle's blessing. The broker agrees to contract a medicine man to prepare a poisonous concoction and administer it to my son. A child's life has now been sold for 40 US dollars plus three fouls. I'm deeply shocked. Had this been for real, then I'd just have become an accessory to a plot to murder my child. After sealing the deal with the broker, I'm moving on to the neighboring province of Bongo to meet with another group who said they are willing to kill my child. 
This time, I'm dealing directly with the medicine man, and from what I have heard, he's more than ready to take on the job. <laughs> I'm going to go to the Tu <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> you can't do it. I can't I can't be I can't be in here. I can't I can't be in here. I can't be in I've now invited two groups of men to come to my rented property in two days' time and administer the concoction to my fictitious child. The medicine man's group is scheduled for first thing in the morning, the brokers for the afternoon. What they don't know is that local police officers will be hidden away in one of the buildings watching on TV monitors. But first, I need to prepare the house to receive them. Now Kofi can be passed out through this window while his dummy is left waiting on the bed and the local police observe his would-be killers from these monitors. All that remains is to await the arrival of the concoction men. I'm anxious but if all goes to plan, we'll soon be catching two sets of killers in the act and sending out a dramatic message that children can no longer be killed with impunity. As dawn breaks the next morning, the police arrive and pack a safe distance from the house. Plain clothes officers will be monitoring every moment of the concoction men's activities, while two armed police in uniform will wait by the vehicle ready to take anyone arrested into custody. Kofi is also now with us so that the concoction men will believe our story. We move over to the house in twos and threes to avoid arousing suspicion. Our crack team is now assembled one undercover reporter, six plain-clothed police officers, and a baby. It's time to bring in our dummy child and place it on a makeshift bed in the secret camera room. He's now ready to take Kofi's place at the last minute. Three officers take up positions outside, while the area crime officer and his two remaining colleagues sit in the monitoring room. 
From here, they will keep patient vigil and be ready to move in the moment the concoction men show clear intent to kill. Suddenly, we hear the medicine man and his accomplice approaching. 100 meters away, they are coming. I take the medicine man and his accomplice inside the house to show them the real child. Oh. Suddenly, with the medicine man leaning over Kofi, I'm nervous about his safety. They clearly have no qualms about killing him. And it gets worse when they demand a closer look. Bringing him outside for them to inspect is sickening. But I need them to believe I am ready to follow through if my plan is going to work out. <laughs> that is not for them to... I know, but let's do it inside. Eh? No eh? So let's do it in the inside. Eh? Mm. 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 There is no way I'm leaving Kofi there with them for a second. It's time to get him to safety. I pass him out through the window and into the secure arms of a waiting police officer. The medicine men built a fire and boiled some roots they dug up earlier this morning to create their deadly brew. Finally, they are ready to administer the concoction. We make our way into the bedroom where they demand I hand over the child. They still don't know it's a replica. Let's move. You are under arrest. You are not obliged to say anything unless you wish to do so. But whatever you say will be taken down and be given in evidence in a court of law against you. Is this also part of it? Yes, that's the, the, this is the prepared one. And then this is where they prepare to put the baby. Yeah. To keep the baby. To keep. Yeah, for the baby to die. Even in handcuffs, one of the men is still hanging on to a dummy as forensics officers begin to take samples of the materials used to make the concoction. No, but and the liquid the men had already prepared to administer to Kofi. Having gathered sufficient evidence, the police are now confident that the men both intended and attempted to murder a child. The police vehicle is ready and waiting to take them into custody.
At the police station, the men are booked in and told to give up all their possessions, including their clothes, before being put into their cells. They will now wait here under lock and key until a court decides their fate. Back at the house, night has fallen, but the broker and his collaborators, the other group I invited to visit Kofi, have failed to show up. The police decide our evidence is sufficient to arrest them anyway. As soon as he is taken into custody, the broker agrees to guide us to the homes of his accomplices. First is the soothsayer who declared my fictitious child was evil. Then to prevent anyone from warning him to escape, we creep up on the house of the medicine man who has been commissioned by the broker to prepare and administer the concoction. His payment for poisoning the child, this live fowl, is also discovered and taken as evidence. As they are loaded into the police wagon and taken to the cells, the broker and the soothsayer wear very different expressions to the first time we met. It looks to me like they only now understand that taking a child's life is a criminal act. At police headquarters in the regional capital, Bolgatanga, the men who were apparently happy to kill Kofi have been brought in for questioning. They will be interrogated by District Commander Christian Bochi in the presence of a police interpreter. Evidence taken from the crime scene has been brought in to be presented to the suspects. And that's my medicine. That's some of my medicine. Excerpts from our secret footage are also played to the suspects to confront them with their actions. Uh -huh. that, that is where all those will be after after we kill the child, they buried him. You have to come formally to him. After the child died. You want him to bring the health and then... Mm -hmm. The medicine man still refuses to own her, but the commander is satisfied with what he has seen. Next, forensics officers prepare samples taken from the crime scene in the presence of both suspects. These will now be sent off to laboratories for testing. While the results are still formally pending, experts have identified the route used by the men as something known locally as bumbunle. They say that it is highly poisoned and had Kofi drank their concoction, he would have died in a matter of hours. The police have now charged both of these men with attempted murder. The other three men who were arrested have also been charged in their case with conspiracy to commit murder. It will now be some months before they come to trial. It's time for me to leave the north behind and take my findings to a higher authority. I've arranged to meet the Deputy Minister for Women and Children. Up to now, the Ghanaian government has focused purely on advocacy to eradicate this problem. Is the minister now ready to do more? We have passed the stage of advocacy. I think we need to take some action. We have policemen who have been trained to um, work on domestic violence. This is clearly domestic violence. And I think that uh, the policemen are aware that certain things should, should not be taken um, for granted. We should not take it lightly because these are human lives. Once we lose a child, that is the end of it. We can never bring that child back. We need to make arrests, we need to um, prosecute some people, we need to let people understand that we are not joking. This is certainly the direction we must take now in Ghana if we want to consider ourselves a modern country. Whatever traditions may have been practiced by our forefathers, today the abuse and murder of children has no place in any society anywhere. <laughs>